guys, what's going on? This is David with Random Tech Tips, your one-stop source for all things digital, tech, and fun. In today's video, we're going to be taking my old 2011 Dell XPS laptop, and we're going to be applying Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut to it. So I actually didn't come up with this idea on my own. I actually saw a video of Linus over at Linus Tech Tips, and they took apart a $3,000 laptop and applied the Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut liquid metal to the GPU and CPU dies, and I think that was the only thing that they applied it to. Uh, however, that got me thinking. I have this really old Dell laptop. It was top of the line back in 2011. It's got a dedicated GPU. Uh, I believe it's the GeForce GTX 435M, um, and it has one of the first generation mobile i5 processors on it. So I used this laptop way back in college when I was getting into PC gaming. Uh, I'd always been a console guy, so this was a really nice laptop for the time. Uh, however, it did have issues with getting really hot, and I could never keep it on my lap for more than, uh, I'd say, 20 minutes or so without it feeling like a furnace down there. So looking ahead seven years now, the laptop hasn't improved in thermals whatsoever. Uh, if I were to keep the laptop on my lap for any extended period of time, it is going to fry my legs. So this video is really just going to be more of a vlog style. I apologize. Again, I don't have a capture card, so I can't actually capture the footage that's on the screen, which is what I would like to do. So I have old school camera just pointing straight at a computer screen setup. So sorry, I'm going to take us back to 1995 for a moment. All right, so we're going to test the performance of what adding Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut to this CPU GPU combo does in terms of performance in IDA 64. So I could do Cinebench and a few other benchmarks that they, I think they did Time Spy as well in Linus's video, but really I'm just concerned about the temperatures that are going to be blowing out of the fan and onto my lap. So we're just going to look at IDA in these tests here. But if you guys want me to go back and benchmark different titles like uh, Time Spy or any sort of video games. I think League of Legends still runs fine on it. Overwatch probably runs fine on it. Let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do that because I'm always looking for new content for the channel. So we're going to go ahead and cut into a time lapse now. So you're going to see me disassembling the laptop and then applying uh, Silver Arctic. Uh, I don't remember which specific synthetic blend it was, but I got some Silver Arctic thermal paste. And then I am going to test with that thermal paste and see if that makes any difference. And then we're going to take the laptop apart again, and we're going to apply the Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut Liquid Metal. So this is the first time I've ever applied liquid metal to anything. I've never delated a CPU, so I don't really know what to expect as far as thermal design goes. But if, it, if it's anything like Linus's video, then I think we can expect some pretty great improved performance. I think he had like 20 degrees Celsius difference. If all goes well, then I think I'm going to potentially look at delitting my 4770K that's in my current editing and gaming PC to see if I can get better temperatures on that because I do have it overclocked pretty substantially. I'm at 4.8 right now. But I also run pretty high around the 60s in temperatures even with an air liquid cooler on the system. All right, so that's enough talking, guys. Let's go to the time lapse and look at some of the results that we had, and then I'll wrap everything up at the end of this video.
All right, guys, so as you can see, we were actually able to get a little bit of a decrease in overall CPU temperature, and we saw a drastic decrease in about 20 degrees in our GPU temps between the stock paste that was already on there and the thermal grizzly conducting that liquid metal that I applied. There were a little bit of differences with the uh, silver arctic thermal paste that I applied as well, but we saw vast improvements with the GPU specifically with the liquid metal. So I guess I can give Linus's results my seal of approval, like he really needs it. So something I've been personally interested in seeing was how my four generation old i7 4770K stacks up against these new Ryzen APUs in terms of processor performance. Now I know the integrated graphics is going to vary immensely, so I'm not really concerned about that. I will be using a dedicated GPU. So over the course of the next week or so, my plan is to get a baseline of benchmarks using the 4770K and a GTX 980. That should make sure that the processors are able to be maxed out to their fullest and the GPU is not going to be the bottleneck factor. Uh, and I'm going to compare that to using the 2400G with a GTX 980. So I know that there will be other differences since Haswell uses DDR3 RAM, but I'm going to overclock that RAM to 2400 MHz to match that of the DDR4 kit that I already have on hand. So that's it for this video, guys. As always, if you like what I'm throwing down, and hit that like button and get subscribed to see those benchmarks that I was just talking about. Also, I want to create content personalized for my audience, which is you. So if you have a project idea or a request in mind, hit me up in the comment section or even better, follow me over on Twitter and tweet at me. No, really, I need Twitter followers. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. We're closing in on 100 and only a month of uploading videos, which is truly incredible. I definitely appreciate all the support and I can't wait to start giving back to you in terms of content and giveaways. Until next time, I'll tech you later.